Welcome to YG TV and YG Workshop, presented by First Federal Bank and sponsored by Circle Electric and Health Payment Systems. I'm your host, David Bellman, president of Bellman Homes. YG Workshop is a collaborative environment designed to help businesses see their blind spots, consider new perspectives, and grow toward their goals. Our panel of experts work together to help an entrepreneur that is growing their company. Today, the team and I are helping George Breger, owner of Company Brewing. Let's meet the panel. I'm Ariel Kopak, mindset coach, founder of Harness Your Hindrance. I'm Mervyn Bird. I'm a Vistage Chair and Executive Coach. I'm Lori Hybe, CEO of Keystone Click, a strategic digital marketing agency. Welcome to First Federal Bank of Wisconsin. Here at the bank, we pride ourselves on providing the community bank difference. To us, it's more than a tagline. It's how we serve our customers and support our communities. When you work with us, you can expect quick local decision making, a great customer experience, and a significant community commitment. As experts in the products and services we provide, we are here to help you achieve your financial goals. Proudly serving the Milwaukee metropolitan area since 1922, we look forward to serving you and showing you what the Community Bank difference is all about. Circle Electric is a 35-year commercial, industrial, and healthcare electrical contractor with engineers and designers on staff, backed by the most technical and well-trained master and journeyman electricians. Whether it's an equipment move, new building, or commercial remodel, from pre-construction all the way through startup, primary power, branch power, or low voltage systems, they are here to support you. Our 24-7 on-call service department is here to meet your electrical needs for our industrial and healthcare customers. You always hear safety first. They are safety always. Circle Electric will maintain electrical reliability for business continuity. For more than 80% of families, today's medical billing practices are confusing. At HPS, our goal is to improve the healthcare experience for the patient by making medical bill payments less stressful. In Wisconsin, that's all made possible by our comprehensive independent healthcare provider network. We simplify billing and lower costs for everyone involved in healthcare and offer various ways for individuals to pay without breaking the bank. All right, we are here today with George Breger from Company Brewing. Welcome to YG Workshop, George. Thank you for having me. So you have a very interesting story of how you got into the brewing business. Why don't you share your story and a little bit about your company? Sure, I actually um, started um, uh, in food and beverage in the coffee industry. I worked for a local uh, coffee roaster, which I'm sure many of you know, uh, Colectivo Coffee, formerly known as Altera. I worked there for 14 years. Um, most of the time when I was there, I was the director of coffee, so I was traveling around the world, buying co green coffee, sourcing, basically everything production in, in the coffee uh, in, for that business um, from the farmer to the customer. And during that time, I got really interested in food and beverage, and I really liked the kind of dynamic, um, uh, way that the that industry was where you have you know sort of this manufacturing piece and sourcing raw materials and things like that and then you have and a wholesale business and then you have um, your retail business where people can come and you can interact with, with others and you know you sort of have this place where you can go um, and so I was sort of pondering what, what am I going to do after coffee if I do anything after coffee and um, I decided uh, B 
Beer. Beer sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> that always sounds good. We live in Milwaukee, right? I like beer. Yep. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's sort of the opposite of your typical uh, storyline. You know, like most people say, well, I, they just start home brewing and uh, then they say, oh, I'm going to, I think maybe I'll try to open a brewery. You know, I'm a pretty good home brewer. I said, I'm going to try to open a brewery. I better start home brewing. <laughs> I better start, I better start, learning, I better start learning about this. So um, throughout my probably last four or five years um, at my job in coffee, I started home brewing like crazy, um, learning as much as I could, perfecting things. Then I actually launched a beer, um, a few beers for my for Colectivo. They have beers in a few of their cafes now. Did that in uh, partnership with Three Sheeps up in Sheboygan. And then um, I had been kind of, I had my kind of sights set on opening in the neighborhood in which I live, which is River West. I really like that neighborhood. Um, been lived there for a long time. And there was one specific spot um, that I wanted to open the business in, and that is um, on where we are now uh, on Center Street. Um, it used to be called Stonefly Brewing Company, and before that it was a Nopa Brewing Company. And uh, when it was those two breweries, I would go in there as a patron and um, also as a, a performer. I was a musician playing in bands and things like that. So I always loved the space. Man of many talents, right? A man of many talents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I might, yeah. Um, and so uh, I always wanted to kind of be in that space and I felt like there was a lot of potential and I loved how that, that building and that spot was sort of the center of the neighborhood and you could do so many things in it, um, you know. And so the timing was really good, and the, the owner of, uh, of Stonefly was ready to move on, so we kind of moved in. And that was like late 2014, and now here we are in 2021-ish. And uh, Yeah, so let's, uh, so you got a really cool story with, you know, kind of learning the business from a different side and the sourcing part of it, and then obviously yeah. you started Company Brewing. So tell me a little bit about company brewing and what makes company brewing different than maybe another local brewery? Well, I think the big thing that makes us different is, um, you know, we're in the center of a neighborhood and we function sort of as a neighborhood hub, um, almost more than we function as a brewery to a lot of people. It's funny because we do so many different things at company brewing that some customers only know us for the one thing, you know, they're like, oh, company brewing. Yeah, that's a really great music venue. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Opportunity, right? <laughs> and, uh, you know, some other customers um, say, oh, I love the food there, you know, and some other customers say, oh, they have great beer, and some customers say, where are you, you know, and, and when we go off and do off-site events, um, we get a lot of that, still get a lot of that, where are you, who are you, and um, so, I, I think that makes us different, you know, and that's actually helped quite a bit during pandemic too because we have these sort of different um, revenue streams, different types of businesses, different levers to pull. And um, yeah, I think, that, I think that makes us, I think that's kind of what defines us to some degree. And that's why we picked the name company as well. We, we wanted to sort of be this like, that's the most ubiquitous name you could imagine, right? Absolutely. People just say, what are you, company brewing company? What is this? And, you know, <laughs> but the reason that we picked that is because it, a lot of, um, it's sort of anything can be applied to it. You know what I mean? It can t sort of take on the identity of the things around it. And that's, that's sort of the um, vibe of our business in, in the neighborhood. Okay. Well, neat story and obviously a very cool business, but you came here for a reason. You guys are looking for a little direction and help. So what's the main pressing question that you would have for your business? Yeah, I mean, I, so, especially coming out of pandemic, where we shrunk to the smallest version of our business since we opened, um, we are now trying to grow back up to what we were. But at the same time, during pandemic, we did the, uh, what is now the buzzword of uh, the, the 2020s, we did the pivot. Uh, to oh, we got a drink. Every there time we, we say pivot, we all pivot. drink. Yeah, cheers. Pivot. <laughs> we this is way well on, on We did the pivot to, uh, you know, we've to focusing on our wholesale business. <laughs> no, we, okay, we'll do it one more time. This is get a game some, you play at Company yeah, Brewing. Yeah, right? yeah, we'll get some good uh, blooper reel from yeah. this. Um, 
I don't know what okay, other so word. Right. Sorry. <laughs> so it's the pandemic. Word to use. <laughs> we shifted our focus to our wholesale business um, because everybody is drinking beer at their house now, right? And um, most people, their experience with craft beer, uh, many people, um, is as at home and as at, is at the, on the grocery store shelf. So we um, were fortunate enough to link up with a distributor who was interested in picking us up and uh, doing the distribution of our beer, which we had self-distributed up until that point. And so now um, we, we are doing that. Our wholesale business is growing. It over tripled, I think almost quadrupled during well, pandemic. That's fantastic. So it was sort of the bright spot of, of that time for us. Um, but now I, we, we have to figure out how to grow that part of our business while re-growing um, the, the sort of the retail, the in-person retail part gotcha. of the business. And, you know, I just need to have that sort of that personal growth moment where I become, you know, less hands-on, less day-to-day, -day, and I'm able to actually just guide the work on the business instead of working in it. So, so, so what, what your main question really is, how do you grow the business, but then also make sure that, you know, you're kind of pulling yourself a little bit away from the day-to-day so that you can focus your energy on growing the business and the different segments that you have. Yeah. Is that kind of a fair that, question? Yeah, that sounds right. Okay, perfect. Well, I think that's a great topic that we can help you with. But before we really dive into that further, we have some more questions for you to really understand your business. So then I'm going to turn it over to my expert panel here. Mervin, you're up. What, yeah. what questions do you have we for got, you? Can I have a, a two-parter? Sure. <laughs> All right. So give... Just because you match me, so. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> When we did not text uh -huh. about this. Yes, no. <laughs> so, George, give me an idea. What does your team look like right now? What is your, your, your top talent? What, are the, what does that look like right now? So our front of house team is, you know, is, is small. We've basically kept our, you know, key people. And we lost some key people during, during pandemic as well. But fortunately, uh, the people we have um, sort of on the retail front of house side are all long term and, you know, they, they've been around for a while. Um, because we are shifting towards more wholesale and doing more wholesale, we've brought on an extremely talented marketing manager. So we're actually as strong as we've ever been or stronger than we've ever been um, on the kind of marketing and brand side. Um, and then in the brewery, um, we've been fortunate enough to pick up um, some very talented people in there as well. So I would say, um, and then my wife is, is running our kitchen. So of course we have an extreme level of talent and beauty. There you go. And, <laughs> yes, I think she'll want you to say more. In our, yep, yep. <laughs> in our back of house. Uh, the brawny points are going up right now. So we do have, we do have, um, you know, really, really like a lot of talented key people in all the areas. So where are there you know, on the follow up? Where are the gaps? I would say the gaps are still front of house. Um, and I mean servers specifically and then specifically servers and bartenders. Okay. All right. And also back of house cooks. OK, so yes, those are sort of your, um, you know, hourly workers and not your management type workers. But and this is sort of a sidebar to the main question, which is, you know, the restaurant industry is was never really built to be extremely sustainable. I mean, you see how many restaurants open every year. You see how many restaurants close every year. And of course, the climate that we're in creates additional challenges on top of creates that. Creates additional challenges and really shines this extremely bright light on the flaws in our industry. And um, Right now, restaurants everywhere, and see, I'm speaking as a restaurant right now, but music venue, whatever, restaurants everywhere. <laughs> restaurants, I want to hear about that later. Yeah, yep. yeah. Restaurants everywhere are really struggling to find um, help. And I think a lot of the reason is that they all got, everybody got laid off during pandemic, and they're now doing other jobs and not necessarily returning to this industry that didn't really treat them very well in the first place. So we're trying to rethink how we structure our business so that there are there we can pay our sort of base level workers a higher wage and try to r remove 
the management um, layer to our business. And so um, it's been, the challenge has been finding new people to kind of bring in and also bring them in into this kind of new way of thinking where they don't just report to a manager and say, hey, what do you want me to do? They have to learn these skills. They have to learn how to order. They have to learn how to self-manage. They have to learn how to run the floor. They have to learn how to do all these things because we're trying to make their job better so they can afford health insurance and stay in this industry long and have maybe you know have a family or do, do whatever these things that they want to do um, and not just sort of perpetuate this um, kind of industry of transient short-term workers. Okay. Did that get both parts of your question? Yes. Okay. And, and then have, some, probably. More, yeah. but, but, uh. Ariel, you, question so, for you? So, uh, you mentioned getting into the space of being able to guide instead of being in it, and you just alluded to some of the gaps and perhaps some of the ways that you need to step up or step into your business. What do you get pulled into the most that is oh. always taking you away from the guidance? <laughs> How much time do we have? <laughs> what do I have? <laughs> oh man, the, I, the, I, it's, it feels like it's a little bit of everything, you know, and um, that's you know that's not the the answer that you probably wanted. But um, the parts of the business that I get pulled into most are sort of the front end, yeah, the retail part, um, you know, and maybe that's because that's where we have the most gaps in in staffing right now. Um, that's also where the, kind of the most surprises can happen, you know, and when you're brewing, if you've planned out your week, month, year well, um, and you have s s just a couple skilled workers, they can execute uh, the plan. Um, but when you're dealing with humans entering your space day in and day out and drinking and everything else and having fun, all kinds of um, unexpected things can happen. And so, um, you know, it's it sort of planning for the unexpected is one of the things that I think is most challenging because like, how do you write an SOP for something that you, you know, you, you didn't really see coming or, you know, how do you, how do you, how do you plan for that? Does that answer your question? It does for now. Sort of. <laughs> Rory, I know he mentioned marketing, so I knew oh, your ears have, are burning. Oh, I have lots of. Lots of <laughs> I'm going to start with um, definitely a big fan of the beer. Uh, there's always some in my fridge right now. Because you are distributing, it's really easy access for me. Yep. Um, it's not so, in the mug, though, is it? Uh, not at the moment. <laughs> Um, so Ariel asked a really good question about like what's happening today, and I'm interested in what would you like your day to look like, like thinking in the future, the ideal scenario for you? I thought these were going to be easy questions. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't watch previous episodes. Um, <laughs> I, I, I have no interest in being an absentee owner. You know, I want my day-to-day -to, -day to be, I want to interact with our staff. Um, I just, I, I feel like um, and maybe I'm answering my own question, and maybe this was the whole point of coming here in the first place. <laughs> but uh, I, I really feel like we're only as we're only going to be as good as I am at planning and laying out the um, kind of what the 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 map roadmap is to success. And so, what I would like to be doing is more of that work, you know, and less of sort of putting out fires and you know I yeah so well that, and that, uh, I, I think you maybe you were reading my sheet because that was my question next was do you set aside time consistently to plan do you is that part of your daily routine to to have or a weekly routine for that matter so you know I'm not not super proud to admit that I am only in the setting aside time to set aside time to set aside time to plan right now or I'm not really like I'm not I don't sit down and do the planning other than you know I have a few hours a week where I do that yes okay but I sort of get it into my I'm gonna do this um, if I kind of reach reach this point in my to-do list kind of thing okay but I, so it's but maybe not the high priority it, it doesn't make it as much as you want as much as I want it to be the high priority um, there t typically are things that need to be um, tended to ahead of it. You know. Gotcha. Yeah. All right then. How important is this to you then? The business. The the Life. fact that 
you know, you want to grow, you want to grow this on a strategic yeah. basis. You want to grow without you having to be involved in the day to day. Yeah. It's not a priority for you to think strategically about the business because there are many other things that are kind of fires. Yeah. How important is this to you? Yeah, I mean, that's the question, you know, and that's, I'll say on a scale of one to 10, 10. Okay. It's a 10 of importance. I think <laughs> that's obvious, you know, you're, when you're a small business owner and you've, you know, you sort of put your whole life and, and, and financial on the line uh, to do this, then yes, if it, it's gotta be a 10. So who, who and I, this is gonna be a very obvious question and answer, who is holding you accountable to do the work of the founder CEO of this business, which is your job being a strategic thinker and leading and guiding from the helm, who's holding you accountable? Well, that. it's it's only me, you know. You knew the answer to that question. <laughs> I, yeah, I think you read my question. Right? <laughs> you knew the answer to that yeah. question. You yeah. know, it's funny because but sometimes I, you have to have that blinding flash of the obvious, right? Yeah, like you, you have to just have that moment. You do. Yeah, and you know, I'm a I'm like a collaborative uh, worker, and but a solo owner essentially. And I've sort of I've joked, but you know, everybody knows I'm not really joking that. Um, I've said, you know, I would do anything to have a business partner. You know what I mean? Because I think like that accountability piece becomes, at least for how I work, becomes much easier and more more productive, more effective if um, you know we're sort of bouncing off of each other instead of me bouncing off of uh, whatever's around me. Okay. I'm picking up on a lot of trends from what you said that I think really show that you do embody an entrepreneur. Right, there's that sense of starting something, not knowing what the problem is, and then going and figuring it out. Mm -hmm. There's a bit of that rush that you get, and that sense of fulfillment when you solve the problem or something unexpected came and you're able to address it or solve mm -hmm. it. The challenge is what they're talking about with planning and strategizing and spending that time thinking and uh, projecting your business. It's a completely different mode, and it's also not always as immediately fulfilling. Right. So my question to you is, as you enter into this new space and this level of growth and leadership, what do you have to let go of or perhaps sacrifice to enter into that new space? Yeah, that is a good question. It might be a great so, exercise yeah. for you to, to, to pencil in, right? Yeah. yeah. Think about what, what, what you might need to let go. Yeah. Yeah. So the hard part, it's harder to let something go than it is to grab onto something. Yeah, so for sure. So thinking about as you enter into this new space, not only what do you need to bring more in, perhaps accountability, but also what do you need to let go of? Mm -hmm. I'll come back to you on that one. Okay. Um, you talked about having a business partner, but you don't necessarily need to have that. Do you have a number two person on the team that can hold you accountable or take alleviate some of these uh, daily activities that are bogging you down? Well, we yeah, I mean, we've had that in the past for sure. Um, pandemic sort of stripped us of all the all that stuff, you know. So, just getting back to that, maybe hiring for that. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the challenges too is like there's in, in the restaurant industry, I think you see um, a lot of business owners that work in the business all the time. You know, there's there ex unless you get into big big chains or things like that, you're oftentimes seeing the chef owner or you know um, someone who sort of runs the front of house uh, is also the owner. And I think that just the way the financial typical financial structure of a business like ours works. Um, you, people often, you know, they haven't, unfortunately, they haven't started a business for themselves. They've just sort of made a job for themselves. There you go. And, um, how, you know, sort of getting over that hump, like knowing when to take that leap and say, like, I have confidence where I, now I can just hire this, spend this money, and we're, it's going to take us to that next place. You know what I mean? Okay. And you're always, you're always looking at, the the P and L and you're always saying like oh, I you know I could just do I could do a little more I could do another month of this um, you know but it's it's not healthy and it's not it's not going to get get us to where we need to be long term. Okay. Any last questions for George? I might as well switch into advice. Uh, I, I do. Are you part of any uh, business associations? George? Um, not nothing beyond like um, like the Brewers Association. You know, sort of the the basic. Yeah. Okay. Trade organizations like that. Okay. Well, I think we've got a good picture of kind of what you're doing, the business. Um, now we're going to shift a little bit and go into 
some advice for you and give you some some takeaways from this so that you can kind of start to put it to you. So who wants to start? Who would like to jump in with some advice? I'll defer because I don't I don't want to have to say what I have to say yet. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. oh, oh. I'm, hoping some, I'm hoping someone else happy, will say it. I'm okay. happy to go. Yep. Um, there's a lot of things I want to say. <laughs> uh, and I love the question that Mervyn had about important versus urgent. And yeah. You're tackling urgency where you have to make time to the important activities because um, that's what's going to allow you to progress forward. Right. And um, working on the business is a vital component to, to not be an employee anymore. Yeah. And, and you have to calendar that no matter what. And you can't sacrifice it for anything unless the building's on fire, basically. Mm -hmm. And you have to tell your team this, too. I am not available for these issues. Figure it out. Yeah. This is their job. They have things that let, let them grow and learn, like you're talking about, by telling them you are not available because you're working on our growth plan. Mm -hmm. You know, make it clear to them that unless the building's on fire, I am not available at this time. Yeah, it's good advice. Yeah. So, as was discussed here about the where you're at now versus where you want to be, uh, coming in from the mindset perspective, the more you can get clear on what that looks like, and as Lori said, picture that day. What does that day look like when you're at that space? Because I have found that clarity provides inherent accountability. If you want accountability, you got to get clear on what it is that you're going for, what it is that you want to build and create. And when you make that clear, then you can pursue it. But until you make it clear, you can't really pursue it and identify what you need to take on, what you need to let go of. So what is that dream day and to you as a leader, what does that really look like and mean? Because once you make it clear and you really clarify that you want it, you'll naturally start to lead towards it. So clarify it and then create the strategic plan to get there. And as Laura said, inform your team, but also as you talk about, you don't know until it's unexpected, think about the power of your team learning that and mm -hmm. the, your leaders rising because of their experience mm -hmm. and exposure and confidence building too. When you let your team solve problems, you build up their confidence mm -hmm. and your trust in them as well as their trust in themselves. All right, here we go. Well, you ready? And, yeah. <laughs> and, and you give them ownership, yep. right? Once yep. they, right? And, and not necessarily physical, but you give them ownership of that process. Mm -hmm. uh, so a couple of things. Um, you mentioned that, man, you just, you, you bought yourself a job, mm -hmm. right? If you ever want to move, if you think about Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow quadrant, if you want to move from the S quadrant, which where you are, or you're just running around with your hair on fire, to the B quadrant where it kind of runs itself and you're overseeing it, you have to get yourself a coach. Mm -hmm. Yep. You need a coach. You need someone kicking you in the hind end saying, hey, listen, man, you said you were going to do this. Someone needs to hold you accountable to doing that. Yeah. If you say you're going to do A, B, and C, and you only did A, and I'm your coach, <laughs> you got to understand why. You, and I'm not advocating to be your coach. You need a coach. That's why I asked if you're part of any business associations. Yeah, you're right. right in MMAC's backyard. They have wonderful small business uh, Cosby group that you can be with other entrepreneurs that will kick your butt if you don't do sure. what you say you're going to do. And so the other thing I would say is, is, is a couple of books. Covey's uh, Seven Habits books. It talks about that important versus urgent mm -hmm. and, and living in quadrant two where you're working on important things that are not urgent and Kiyosaki's cash flow quadrant just to understand the difference from the mindset standpoint of what it's like to be a small business owner versus a B business owner. Yep. I, those are great points and you know we're on the same wavelength here but I'm going to tell you that you know when you're a business owner sometimes it's a lonely place. It can be a very lonely place because sometimes you, you know what you should be doing, but you just tend to fall back into these other things that you're doing. And Mervyn's exactly right. You need someone, whether it's a coach or, you know, I think that's the better, better route. You could have a partner that's, you know, helping with that. But I think in this case, a coach would be better because then, you know, they can help make sure that you are sticking to that plan that you're creating and they're holding you accountable. And that way you feel like, oh, I've got a, you know, I've got that call coming up next week. I got to make sure I get my things done. And uh, it's, it's very valuable. And even though there's an expense many times to that, it'll pay for itself almost right away because you're now instantly more productive. Investment. Yes, there you go, investment. I like that. Fantastic. Any other advice? With 
the pieces of your business. You have the wholesale and you have the, the engagement with the people. I know we're talking a lot about the d dedication of your time. And I want to be clear that as you uh, envision the reality that you want, also make sure that you keep the fun of your business there too. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about strategy, we're talking about important things, things that will help your dream come to life. But allow for that time. I, I sense that perhaps being front of the house is a lot of fun. Too. Yeah, for sure. So incorporate that into your plan. We're not saying take that away, mm -hmm. uh, but let that be intentional fun. And then you have your intentional leadership, business ownership time. So you can have both, but be intentional about when you're switching modes. So make sure you still have fun with your business because business you. ownership should be fun. Yeah, yeah. I love that. <laughs> I, I'm going to add what I know is that your space, especially in River West area, is very much a strong community and there's a lot of support amongst the other uh, microbreweries that are around there. Um, why don't you start a, a peer group of some sort where you get together once a month and talk about challenges and hold each other accountable, something along those lines, um, if, if a coaching path isn't a, a right way for you to go. But it's a great opportunity to share your wins, but talk about the losses and the challenges that you're experiencing as well. Yeah, that's good advice. Um, one other thing that I'm going to touch on, just a little different angle, because you had mentioned this earlier and I marked it down and I thought it was interesting, was you know you were a little concerned about how do I bring people in and get new people and, and, and maybe get rid of the management structure part of it. Um, one thing you may want to look at or consider you know, bouncing off of other smart people is you know, giving your employees or potential employees some sort of stake in the game and what that might look like so that they are invested in the organization. So that might differentiate you from a typical restaurant job where you're just, okay, I'm just here to work from nine to five or you know four to 10 or whatever the hours are. Now they have something, like if I do a really good job and we have a profitable day, I share in that, I gain in that. Uh, whatever that looks like, that might be something that you wanna look at and that would be a great differentiator for you when you're out, you know, hiring people and bringing new people on. Yeah, yeah. we've actually sort of already talked this through and tried to figure this out. And it's funny because the, this industry, at least for front of house staff, is already built that way. You know, like if we have a good day, yeah, you're gonna make more money because there's more tips coming in. Um, and, you know, it's just how to kind of take that to the next level where people sort of understand more about kind of the, how the business functions financially, you know, and so that they can kind of see it beyond just their own little sphere. Sure, but just think about that. That might be an, uh, a, a way, you know, and you know, a lot of times with servers, it's like, okay, yeah, if I do a good job, I'll get a bigger tip, but that doesn't necessarily incentivize them if the company does well. No, That's, right, exactly. that They did yeah, well, so yeah. you have to take it to the next level yes. of how does, if the com company performs well, and I'm a part of that, mm -hmm. you know, now they share in that, and then now they're really fully vested, uh, you know, with you and your team. Yeah. Other advice? Anything else that you guys want to add? I'm good. Thanks You're good? Coming. All right. So, George, we threw a lot of stuff at you. What do you think is your biggest takeaway from today? Um, I think the, uh, the biggest takeaway for me is probably your point about the coaching. Um, I think just having that accountability, you know, I mean, and is helpful, you know, and to know that it's sort of sometimes I think difficult to admit that that's an area where you need to bring in outside help, you know, to say, well, no, I can, I can figure this out, you know, like if, as long as I just hold myself accountable, then I'll hold myself accountable. <laughs> um, but, but, but yeah, bringing, you know, sort of working with a coach or getting, getting that kind of person in, in your life, in your sphere that is going to hold you accountable, I think is, is, would be really useful for me. And uh, that is my biggest takeaway. Are we recording this? This has been great. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> yeah. You're going to watch this one back, right? <laughs> that's great. Well, that's what, that's, that's the, the, the bonus part of it is you get to yeah. rewatch it all. Yeah. Well, it's important and it's okay to ask for help. That's, that's the yeah. main takeaway. Uh, well, George, thank you so much for sharing about your business. You have a very cool, business model, you do some really amazing things, so be proud of yourself, and I know that you're gonna take some of this advice to heart and you're really gonna kill it in the next session here, so. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you for coming on YG Workshop. Thanks, everybody. George. I'm David Bellman, president of Bellman Homes. Thanks to our panel, Lori, Ariel, and Mervyn, as well as our guest, George Bregar. Thank you for watching YG Workshop, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>